Um, so the title of my, my talk as announced is Hierarchical Groups of Symmetric Representation Finite Algebras. And uh, I will begin uh, by reminding you the definitions that uh, I guess uh, almost every, everybody knows, but still I want to, to make sure that we are on the same page. Uh, and also I think this talk will be in general quite elementary. So if you have any, any questions, Throughout my talk, um, uh, K will be an algebraically closed field. And by modules, I will mean uh, finite dimensional right modules, uh, if not stated otherwise. And now let uh, A and B be uh, finite dimensional K algebras. And uh, we say that A and B are derived equivalent if their bounded derived categories are equivalent as triangulated categories. Uh, and by DBA, uh, I mean uh, DB mod A. And uh, it is well known that uh, this condition is equivalent to the existence of a so-called uh, tilting complex. And th th this is usually attributed to Rickert, but uh, I want to remark that uh, it is also basically contained in the paper I bundle. Um, so what is a tilting complex? It is uh, a, a complex of, uh, a, a perfect complex, which uh, generates uh, the subcategory of perfect uh, complexes. Uh, it's endomorphism algebra uh, is uh, B, as isomorphic to B as in K algebra, and it has no uh, uh, negative or positive self extensions. So such a complex is called uh, tilting. And another reformulation that will be useful for me. Um, so this is equivalent to the existence of two uh, complexes of high modules. So uh, um, a bounded complex X of uh, uh, BA modules, uh, high modules and Y of um, AB high modules, uh, such as the restrictions to both sides are perfect. And uh, if you multiply them in this order, you, you, you get uh, a, uh, a in uh, the derived category of AA by modules. And in this order, you get uh, B in the derived category of B by modules. And such uh, complexes are usually referred to as uh, two-sided uh, tilting complexes. Uh, now, a few, a few uh, more uh, basic remarks. So if I have two uh, two-sided tilting complexes like that, X and Y, then they define, uh, they define quasi-inverse uh, equivalences between uh, DBA and uh, DBB. Oops, sorry. Uh, So these are quasi uh, inverse uh, equivalences. Uh, and such equivalences of this form, um, multiplication by two sided tilting complex, uh, they are referred to as uh, standard. Uh, standard uh, equivalences. Uh, okay, uh, another remark is that, um, so uh, if you take a two-sided tilting complex and restrict it to one side, then you get uh, a tilting complex as de defined uh, here. Uh, so restrictions of two-sided tilting complexes are tilting complexes. And uh, the other way around, if you have a tilting complex, so you, if T uh, is tilting uh, with um, and the more it's and the morphism algebra, it's uh, isomorphic to B, uh, then. 
uh, it can be extended to a two-sided tilting complex. So there exists a two-sided uh, tilting complex uh, co complex F uh, X of you know, A modules uh, such that uh, its restriction to, to one side is uh, is is t. So uh, such as x is isomorphic to t in uh, d b a. And um, moreover, such uh, an extension to the two sided tilting complexes, such x is almost unique. It's unique up to an automorphism of uh, the algebra b. So uh, any such uh, X is uh, um, let me say any such two sided uh, tilting complex is um, of the form. Uh, so I have this this X and I multiply by uh, this I module. So here sigma is an automorphism of B. And uh, by this, I mean uh, a bimodule, which is regular on one side and on the other side, the action is twisted by an automorphism of B. Okay. Um, so uh, now let me define uh, the main object of my talk. I would say uh, this is the derived picker group. Uh, it was introduced independently by uh, Rukiet, Zimmerman, and uh, Yukuteli. Um, and uh, this is um, the, the group of two sided tilting complexes of AA pi modules uh, up to uh, isomorphism. And this is the, the same as uh, saying that it is uh, a group of standard autoequivalences of D, DBA. Um, and uh, Another uh, remark I want to, to make, although it might be obvious for us people, is that this is the same as, so you can define it for any uh, uh, enhanced triangulated category. Uh, so if you, um, if you if you just consider uh, autoequivalences which come from uh, autoequivalences of your fixed uh, HG enhancement, and you will get the same thing. Um, and uh, what is known about these groups? Well, uh, they are uh, computed for some nice classes of algebras. Uh, so let me give some, some examples. So uh, computed. Uh, but, and by computed, I mean, uh, well, not necessarily there is like a, a explicit description in each case, but at least the structure uh, is well understood. Um, so for uh, say, um, for uh, commutative algebras, um, uh, for local algebras, for finite dimensional uh, hereditary algebras, Uh, for instance, for uh, reprojective um, algebras uh, of types uh, of Henkin types A and D. Um, and there are more uh, classes about some I will talk later. Uh, what else? Uh, there are discrete algebras. Uh, and uh, some other. Um, so, and, uh, but in general, it's not clear how to do it um, because uh, to, uh, well, uh, to, 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 get a, um, to get a description of this group, you basically have to classify all tilting complexes because of the remarks that I made before, this is the same as classifying two-sided tilting complexes up to uh, automorphisms of, of the algebra. Um, 
And uh, this might lead to some additional motivation to, uh, to uh, the problem, because uh, as we know, uh, uh, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between silting complexes or uh, 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 isomorphism classes. Uh, of uh, silting complexes in uh, uh, and uh, uh, bounded key structures with uh, length hard in uh, DBA and. Uh, Filting complex is the same as filting, but here I allow uh, negative self extension. So uh, replace tilting by filting here. I should replace uh, i not equal to zero by i greater than zero. Yes. So um, this might be an additional motive motivation because classifying uh, tilting complexes is connected to, to classifying key structures in the derived category. Um, okay, and now uh, I want to talk about the class of algebra that I'm interested in in, in, in the stock. And first I will define uh, self-injective algebras. So uh, an algebra is said to be uh, self-injective if it's, it is injective as a module over itself. This is the same as saying that uh, injectives and projectives coincide. Um, th this is a, a nice class of algebras, but I want to consider even a nicer one, which is a symmetric algebra. So we say that an algebra is symmetric if it is isomorphic to its k-dual with a bimodule, yes, uh, bi as bimodule. And uh, it's uh, easy to see that uh, that symmetric algebra is self-injective. Uh, symmetric implies self-injective. And uh, you probably know uh, quite a lot of symmetric algebras. So first of all, these are, uh, for example, uh, group algebras uh, of finite groups are symmetric. Um, um, our graph algebras, Asymmetric for those who know. Uh, for those who don't, I will speak uh, about them a bit later so you can forget it if you don't know what it is. Um, so, this is a quite a wide, highest um, behaving class of algebras. And I want to, to give uh, another equivalent characterization that I know some people like. So, um, A is symmetric. If and only if uh, the following holds, so for any x in uh, dBA and uh, p in uh, we have the following uh, neutral isomorphism. DBA. So uh, sorry. Oh uh, no. So this is isomorphic to KTO of so this this uh check here means KTO. So uh in Basically, if you uh, extend uh, the, defini the original definition of uh, the ser functor a bit, you could say that there is a, a ser functor on uh, the perfect complexes and uh, it is uh, the identity functor. 
Um, okay, and and in particular from this from this uh, characterization, we can see in particular that first of all uh, that this property is invariant under derived equivalence. So uh, so invariant under derived equivalence. Uh, and first, uh, and uh, um, another thing we can immediately see is that uh, the notion of tilting coincides with the tilting. Um, in fact, self-injective algebras are also invariant under uh, under uh, derived equivalence, but uh, this is uh, a bit harder to see. I just realized that when I'm showing my screen, uh, there is some part of it which is not showing uh, on, on the screen. Yeah, so I, 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 I apologize for that. I will try to watch uh, uh, the screen. Uh, okay, uh, and now um, uh, I want to, uh, to talk about uh, representation finite uh, uh, self-injective algebras and later representation finite symmetric algebras. And such algebras uh, were uh, classified by Sashiba by uh, um, um, derived equivalence. And uh, they are in one-to-one uh, -one correspondence with uh, uh, well, AD Dinkin diagrams along with some Data, I will say a bit more about it in a moment, but basically they, they, are, they are of types A, D, and, and E. Uh, and uh, what is uh, this data? Well, they are classified by the ripples uh, gamma Q, T. Um, here, uh, gamma is uh, well, A, D, or E. Um, thinking diagram. Um, here T is uh, one, two, or three. So this is a number called, called portion. And it's a, it is the order of some automorphism of, of gamma. So for instance, uh, you, uh, in order uh, to have three here, uh, we need to have D4. Uh, in place of gamma, because no other Dinkin diagram has uh, an automorphism of um, order three, and uh, and this uh, this is some uh, rational number. It's called frequency. It's not just any rational number. Uh, it can be uh, it can be obtained from the stable uh, AR quiver of the algebra and this was already so so um I must say that this work of Asashiba it it really relies on on a lot of work by I Riedman. Um, and uh, this uh, um, like the shapes of a, a stable air quivers of such algebras were already investigated by her um, Okay, so for instance, uh, for instance, for type A, I will not list all possible combinations in this classification, but for instance, for type A, uh, there are uh, triples of of this form. Uh, where uh, K and M integers and uh, these are so you, you, if you know that uh, then uh, these are so-called self-injective Nakayama algebras if you don't then just forget about it uh, okay so now what we know about derived um, speaker groups of such algebras well but for, for type a uh, for symmetric um, symmetric algebras of, of type a uh, these are precisely uh, Broward 
three algebras, and the derived speaker groups of such algebras were described by in a few, in a few uh, works uh, by Zvonarov and Zvonarov and Volk. Um, and they actually do more. They they actually describe derived speaker groups of of this whole class, uh, and how all of them are symmetric. But I want to concentrate on symmetric algebras from now on. Uh, and let me just give you one example of, for now, I will have more later, but let me give you one example of such an algebra. So of type A, uh, symmetric representation finite. Uh, well, it is like this. So I have a, a quiver shaped uh, as an A, uh, M, uh, Dinkin diagram. I apologize for the strange labeling of, of vertices. So there are M, M, M vertices. I have arrows going both ways. Uh, and now um, going from one cycle to another, so like this or like this is zero. And two such cycles starting at, at the same vertex uh, are equal. Uh, yes. Uh, and this is precisely. Uh, so all, all algebras corresponding to this equi derived equivalence class AM11, they are derived equivalence to derived equivalent to this algebra. Uh, okay. Uh, now, um, what, what, what about actually like, the main result of this talk? Well, we deal with uh, algebras of type D, and uh, we consider. Um, we consider uh, the following class uh, DM11 and uh, analogously to uh, the, the, um, the, the algebra that I did described, uh, these are uh, algebras derived equivalent to the following algebra. So now I have a quiver shaped as a DM thinking diagram. So I, uh, like this and also have arrows going both ways. You don't have to read the relations, uh, I will explain now. Um, and uh, also going from one cycle to a uh, different cycle, so like this or like this, uh, is zero. And uh, cycles starting at, um, at the same vertex are, are equal. So here we have three equal cycles. Uh, oops, no. Uh, and here we have two. Uh, like like before, uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I must say um, it now is that that um, so at some at some point uh, I claimed that these are all uh, all algebras uh, of type D in this classification that are symmetric. This is actually false. There there are other algebras. And um, and these are uh, and uh, and these are algebras that correspond to the following set of parameters. So there are other symmetric representation finite algebras of type D that I'm not considering, but I hope that I will uh, be able to explain later why from a categorical viewpoint, it still makes sense to consider this uh, class of algebras, although it's not all symmetric representation finite of type D. Um, okay, so now let me state the, the main result. Uh, and uh, first, uh, to do it, I need to define the break group of type DM. Uh, and you can do it for A, D, E, or any, any graph that you want. So here I have my DM uh, diagram. Uh, for every vertex of this diagram, I have a generator, sigma i. Uh, if two um, vertices i and j are connected by an edge in this diagram, then I have a braid relation. And uh, if they're not connected, then I have a commutativity relation. Okay. Uh, and now uh, for the main result of the talk. Um, 
Yes, uh, another more remark. Um, and as a remark, uh, I will I will only consider uh, the case uh, m greater or equal to five. So I'm excluding the case uh, d four for technical reasons, just because uh, I want to to make this talk uh, as uh, less technical as possible. So um, and uh, and this diagram ha has an extra automorphism, so it requires some some additional remarks. Um, Okay, so now let me define the following group GM by generators and relations. Um, so I have a, a subgroup uh, isomorphic to this trade group inside, uh, and uh, I have a, a multiplicative group of the field inside. And I also have two more generators, uh, S and, and tau. And when I write it like this, I mean that these generators already satisfy the relations in the break group and in the multiplicative group of the field, respectively. Um, uh, and I, I, I don't write this, these relations uh, here. Uh, again, I just assume that they, they are satisfied. Okay, so what about this new two, uh, two new generators? So tau is of order two. And it, it interchanges uh, the uh, the two uh, generators of the break group one and two, so corresponding to these two vertices, um, and it commutes with other generators of the break group. And these uh, elements of the multiplicative group of the field and this element S are are central. Okay, now let uh, C be the following element in the break group. So it's a, it's the product of uh, the generators from sigma one to sigma m. And uh, finally, the result is uh, as follows. So the derived picker group of this algebra lambda m that I defined here, uh, and then uh, of course, of any algebra from this, from this class. Uh, it is isomorphic to the following quotient of uh, this group GM, depending on uh, the parity of M. So if M is, is even, then I have one more additional relation like this. Uh, and if uh, M uh, is odd, then I have relation like this. The only difference is this uh, generator tau here in this relation. So this might look a, a bit uh, technical and mysterious. So let me e explain what are uh, all these uh, pieces inside this uh, picker group. Uh, okay, so I have three uh, pieces basically. I have, uh, let me try to show the group and the pieces simultaneously. Okay, no. It doesn't work. Okay, so uh, here I have uh, the cyclic, uh, the infant cyclic group generated by S, and uh, you can guess that this S just corresponds to the shift uh, functor on uh, the derived category. This is something that we always have inside uh, the derived speaker group uh, of any algebra. Um, now another part is. Uh, and is um, outer, um, outer, outer automorphisms of the algebra. So this is uh, the classical picker group. Uh, so they correspond to um, Harita uh, equivalences of uh, this algebra. Uh, and it is generated by this uh, additional generator tau and the multiplicative group of the field. And you can guess uh, that uh, this, this generator tau, it, it just uh, in, interchanges two uh, idempotents, uh, two idempotents co corresponding to these vertices and leaves uh, everything else uh, in place. Uh, and uh, and this the this k is uh, actually it is the identity component of 
of uh, well, the group of um, outer automorphisms and uh, the whole derived picker group actually. And uh, the most interesting piece is this one, which is the break group. Uh, and um, let me explain uh, where it comes from. Uh, so it is generated by spherical twists uh, along uh, in decomposable projective modules and how to see it. Uh, so uh, first uh, I will remark that uh, these indecomposable projective modules are zero spherical objects in the derived category. Um, I will explain what it means. So it means that uh, first of all, their endomorphism algebras are isomorphic to uh, this algebra. So just as a, a regular algebra, so uh, the generator T here is in degree zero. But if you want to define n spherical objects for other n's, then you have to, to put n here instead of zero. Uh, and um, second condition is that uh, pi is, um, every P pi is zero calabial, uh, which means that we have the following, uh, we have the, the following functorial isomorphism. Uh, so the first condition is easy to see from the quiver. And the second condition is easy to, to see from what I already explained uh, because uh, this algebra is symmetric. Right. And uh, the module P PI is a projective module. And if you want to define, uh, if you want to define n spherical objects, then then you have to to replace pi by pi shifted by n by n. Um, okay. Uh, so now, if you have a spherical object, well, a zero spherical object in this case, but any spherical object in uh, in, in general, then you can associate to it uh, an O two equivalence, which is called the spherical twist. And in this uh, in this uh, context, um, one can avoid talking about enhancements and why it is uh, defined uh, uh, correctly um, by using the language of two sided tilting complexes, which I started with. So uh, consider the, fo the, following, um, the following map, the multiplication map. Uh, then one can show that uh, the, uh, if you take the cone of this map, then this will be a two-sided tilting complex over my algebra lambda m, uh, and, uh, and hence, uh, and hence uh, this formula will define an, an element of the derived Picard group. Uh, but in general, if you have, uh, I will not go into too much detail, but in general, uh, if you have a k-linear uh, triangulated um, category with a fixed uh, Hg enhancement, uh, then uh, and you have a spherical object, uh, and uh, let's also ask that. Uh, dimension of uh, it's home from 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 p will be finite uh, on the whole category. Uh, then I have uh, an adjunction to like this. Uh, here I have the unbounded category of k vector spaces. Uh, this is tensor product. So I have the following uh, adjunction, and I can define the spherical twist as uh, the cone of the whole unit of this adjunction. Yeah. 
So there is a way to define it as an actual functor. One has to say something about uh, an enhancement, uh, but I, I will not uh, uh, go into detail. Uh, okay, so we have a spherical twist associated to, to uh, each of the indecomposable projectives. And now observe that these indecomposable projectives, they also form a so-called uh, DM configuration in my derived category, which means that uh, like total home spaces between them are one dimensional if the corresponding vertices are uh, adjacent in the diagram and uh, zero if uh, they're not adjacent. Uh, so in the, in, the, in the similar way, you can define uh, AD configurations for any diagram. Uh, and then uh, it follows from uh, the famous result of Adil and Thomas that uh, you have a homomorphism from uh, the, the, the break group of type uh, DM to the derived picker group of, of my algebra, which sends the generator sigma i to the corresponding twist functor. Again, this result is uh, far more general. Uh, I'm just uh, Painting it all like this because this is what I need. Uh, and in my joint paper with uh, Yuri Volkov, we, we showed that this um, homomorphism is actually injective. And once again, uh, we actually work in a much more general context. We work for uh, n spherical objects, so with other other ends, for any ends, uh, for any n not equal to um, to one and for any ID linking diagram. But in fact, the case n equal to zero is the most difficult case uh, in, in, in this result. Uh, so it's, it's nice to have an application of, of it here. Uh, okay, so F is injective. So we indeed have this uh, uh, break group embedded into the derived picker group. Uh, okay, so now we uh, understood uh, this, three blocks inside uh, the derived picker group separately. And what remains to do now is, uh, first of all, uh, understand what are the relations between elements of different blocks. And th 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 this is not obvious, but it's uh, a straightforward computation, I, I would say. So this, this is not so difficult. And the difficult thing is to show that this derived picker group is in fact generated by the elements that I, I listed. So what we need to do is, is the following. So uh, we need to show that if I have a tilting complex, uh, tilting, with uh, endomorphism algebra isomorphic to lambda m, then I need to show that uh, T is uh, the image of lambda m under uh, a composition of twists, uh, well, modulus some obvious things of the automorphisms of the algebra and the shape. So this is what I need to do. And uh, I will try to explain until the end of the talk, I'll try to explain how to do it because, uh, well, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's not immediately clear, like uh, you, you don't know how all tilting complexes look like. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is the difficult part. Uh, but before I, I go into this, because this will involve some very specific uh, representation theoretic mm, mm, machinery, I want to, uh, to state a question in uh, more categorical terms. So the question, uh, 
suppose now I have uh, again uh, a k linear uh, triangulated category with uh, a fixed uh, in with a fixed uh, g enhancement. Uh, and that gamma be an AD uh, Pinkin diagram. Uh, and let uh, BI, so indexed by vertices of this diagram, be uh, a gamma configuration. of, uh, well, zero spherical, for instance, objects. Uh, and uh, assume that these objects generate uh, the, sub, uh, the subcategory of compact, uh, compact objects of, of this, so this will be compact objects. Um, okay, and now the question is the following. So it, it, it is the group of uh, enhanced autoequivalences of this, this category then generated by, uh, generated by this, uh, um, modular uh, shifts uh, well, automorphism of uh, the graph, the diagram, uh, and uh, well, say like the identity uh, component of of this group. Of audio occurrences, uh, and uh, the 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 answer uh, well the answer is yes uh, for uh, type A, and this was shown by Zvonarova in one of the papers that uh, I mentioned before, uh, and for. Type D, uh, this is uh, the subject of this talk. But uh, so, and uh, I'm uh, to, to, to prove this generating property, uh, I, I, I'm using uh, basically the same technique as uh, Alexander, um, which relies on uh, basically, well, representation theory, I would say. And it would be nice to have some explanation that would be purely in categorical terms uh, that wouldn't rely on representation theory or some heavy computations in each type. Uh, and one can also ask the same question for uh, like n spherical objects with other n uh, to also ask, well, ask if, if this group is generated by spherical with some module or something of this. Uh, and uh, one can consider other uh, gamma, not necessarily ADE. Well, in this case, you, you, you will not have uh, uh, the faithfulness of the break group action, but still you can ask if this group is generated by spherical twists. And uh, for instance, for two spherical objects or uh, figure N, it would be nice to see if there are some examples from geometries that can provide some insight, but uh, I don't know actually. So I haven't given this enough thought, but that that would be a, a nice statement, I think. Um, okay, so now, um, yes, and one more remark before I go to, to, to uh, the explanation how to how to uh, uh, express any tilting complex as an image of the algebra under 
faculties. Uh, I want to remark that here I listed uh, automorphisms of uh, the diagram as one of uh, the generating pieces. And one might expect that they are always expressed uh, as the compositions of other elements of spherical twists, shifts, and something like that. But, but this example here in my result, uh, here it shows that for M, even uh, this uh, this automorphism tau, which interchanges two vertices one and two, uh, it's not expressible via uh, any other elements. So you really need to have this uh, this automorphism um, here. Okay. So uh, and now, um, how to show that uh, the derived Picard group in our case is actually generated by these elements? Well, uh, this relies on uh, the theorem uh, by Ihara, uh, which states the following. So if I have a symmetric representation finite algebra, so quite specific, uh, then any tilting complex uh, can be obtained from this algebra itself, uh, considered as a tilting complex over itself, um, by a sequence of uh, left tilting mutations. But uh, so, so, uh, sorry, I forgot to say that this is um, modular shifts. So if you want to exclude shifts, you need to consider tilting complexes generated in non-positive degrees. Um, so, okay, I will remind you what is a tilting mutation since I'm reminding everything today. Um, and I'm calling them tilting mutation because in general, this is the name, but as I, I already mentioned for symmetric algebra, tilting is the same as tilting. Okay, so now uh, let T be a tilting complex, which I split as a sum of some M and X. And uh, in what follows, uh, for me, X will be always in decomposable. Uh, And decomposable, but uh, for the definition, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, and uh, let me consider um, a left minimal at M approximation of, of X, which is the following thing. It's a morphism from X to some M prime, where M prime is an object of at M. Um, now for any object uh, of at M, uh, the following, um, Morphism induced on homes is surjective. So this means that it's a left approximation. And now the property that it's minimal is uh, the following. So for any endomorphism of M prime, uh, if the composition with F is F, then, uh, then uh, G is a isomorphism. So uh, these three properties means, uh, they, they, they mean uh, minimal left approximation. Uh, and now uh, let me take uh, the cone of this minimal approximation, uh, which I'll denote by Y. Uh, it is defined uniquely up to an isomorphism uh, because um, minimal approximation is defined uniquely up to an isomorphism. Uh, and uh, the left mutation of T with respect to X, which I'll denote like this, mu X, uh, plus uh, is the following thing. So I took this X and replaced it by, by Y, which is the corner of the approximation. And for uh, uh, symmetric algebras, so this is only for symmetric algebras. So in, in general, if you mutate uh, if you mutate a tilting complex, you will get a tilting complex, but, but, uh, but here you will get a tilting complex again. Uh, okay, uh, so now uh, we still don't know how all tilting complexes look like, but we know that we can obtain, uh, obtain them all by uh, a sequence of tilting mutations. So the problem is already a, a lot easier. Um, and it can be reformulated as follows. So, 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 so suppose we have, yeah, I'm summarizing what I just said. Um, suppose we have a tilting concentrated in non-positive degrees, 
with the uh, same uh, endomorphism algebra, uh, then I know that there is a sequence of uh, left uh, mutations, uh, which gives me this tilting complex when I apply to my algebra lambda n. Uh, and here uh, I want to uh, explain why I'm I'm not writing some objects uh, uh, here in under scripts of mu. I'm writing some some numbers. Uh, so what I mean is that so first um, my my algebra is the sum of indecomposable projectives, and I I, I take so he, so. He, here I take the mutation which corresponds to to the corresponding in the composable projective. Uh, but then but when I do mutations, uh, I have a canonical ejection between in the composable summons of uh, the old tilting object and the new tilting object because uh, yeah, but when, when, I, when, I, when I mutate with respect to in the, in the composable summand, right? Because I, I, I only change one summand. And uh, so here it, it is clear than what, what I mean by the sequence of numbers. Okay, so now, uh, the, now the goal is to express all sequences of mutations like this, which give the same endomorphism algebra as then uh, as compositions of twists and uh, modular automorphisms and shifts. Uh, but, uh, well, the main question is, uh, suppose you, you had some tilting object with, with uh, uh, the uh, endomorphism algebra that, that you know, how do you find the endomorphism algebra of your new tilting object? How do you control it? Uh, and um, for type A, which uh, was done for me by uh, Van Reo and Polkov, uh, there is a very nice combinatorial classical model um, which allows to uh, control these mutations. And uh, uh, let me uh, talk very quickly about it. So uh, I, will, I will talk about type AM11, so about type A, and these are Broward three algebras. And I must apologize to, to experts. Uh, I know that Broward three algebras are, uh, well, they also have an exceptional vertex with some multiplicity. And here, when I say Broward three algebra, I will mean with, without an exceptional vertex, without multiplicity. Uh, and again, if you, this is the first time you hear this, just, just uh, forget what I just said. Um, okay, so what is a Broward uh, three algebra? Uh, I have um, a three, I start with the three with uh, a cyclic ordering of edges around each, each, each vertex. And it is customary to just uh, depict it like on, on, on the plane, the embedded in the plane and consider the uh, order which is induced by the orientation of the plane. So here I have, uh, clockwise orientation. So th 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 this is how my edges are oriented. And uh, from this, I, uh, I uh, can create um, a quiver. So uh, how do I uh, make a quiver? So now edges will correspond to vertices of the quiver. And I throw, uh, so this, this, yes, this is a bit, as description is a bit informal, but I'm trying to, yeah. Um, hope it's not too informal. And uh, I throw arrows in uh, the same way as uh, my 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 edges go uh, in this cyclic ordering around each 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 vertex. This is the quiver, and it, here if I have a, a leaf, I I I don't throw um, a, a loop. Uh, and the uh, the relations are like this. So you, you can you can see that my quiver is uh, his joint union of uh, of uh, cycles. Uh, well, uh, they 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 have 
vertices in in common but not edges uh, and the relations are like this so the product of two arrows which are mm, mm, on the same cycle uh, is zero and two cycles which start at the same objects uh, are are equal so uh, and uh, this is uh, what i call um our Perry algebra associated to a Broward Perry uh, like this. And uh, you can immediately see that if your Perry is just a, a line like this with M edges, then you will get the algebra that I uh, defined uh, in the beginning of the talk for type A. And uh, the good here. Uh, Using this language of Broward trees, we can easily uh, obtain the endomorphism algebra of our new uh, tilting complex. So uh, this is how it works. If I have uh, an algebra which corresponds to some Broward theory like this, and I want to mutate in the uh, in this in the composable summons, right? So they now correspond to edges of the then there is a very simple combinatorial move that I can make. So I can, I can change this edge uh, uh, like this. And uh, so, yeah, one, one end uh, slides along this edge, one end slides along this edge, and this is the new Broward three. Uh, and uh, I don't have the time to explain how it, it helps. But uh, I, I will just say that in type A, it really helps to control uh, uh, the, the, the mutations and re re reduce uh, like the, the consideration of like all, uh, potentially all sequences of mutations, which is not something that you can consider actually uh, to some uh, sequences of a uh, particular form. And this is what uh, Alexander has in type A. And for type D, I needed to do something similar, but I don't have Broward trees now. I don't have such a, such a nice uh, combinatorial model. Um, but uh, as you can see, like it, it, if you look at the quiver, which I uh, gave you for type D, uh, here you can see that it is like almost a Broward three algebra. So here we have uh, something that cannot happen Broward three algebras. We have th three uh, cycles at the same vertex. But uh, other than this, um, yeah, it's almost a Broward three algebra. And if I start to mutate it, I will also have cycles with uh, common edges, which is not uh, allowed in Broward three algebra, but but it's always or almost uh, 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 like this. Uh, so uh, let me just skip this and go to. And uh, what I do is uh, I describe uh, these algebras of type D. Uh, so they are of uh, two types. So basically, you can either glue uh, three Broward trees uh, by a, a three cycle. So I will not go into it detail, obviously, but but so I have like uh, three Broward uh, three algebras. Uh, glued uh, by a uh, three cycle. Uh, this is kind of one type. And uh, another type is uh, as follows. I have, uh, so I have a power uh, three algebra. Uh, I, I, I take an arrow. Uh, somewhere I add two more vertices in the quiver and I add like four more arrows like this instead of instead of this one arrow so and 
this is it. This is how I, I can kind of uh, m make algebras of type D out of algebras of type uh, of type A. And using this, uh, I also have some analogs of Broward three, which are now uh, some configurations where I can have not only um, like one dimensional edges, but also like two dimensional cells or a more precisely just one. Uh, or I have, uh, uh, I, I have, um, I can have an edge which is like considered as a double edge. Uh, and I have similar rules for mutations which uh, replace um, the classical theory of uh, Broward. Yes, so I, I'm a bit over time and I apologize for that, but thank you very much.